Hello, my name is Monica Araya, and I'm a campaigner at Drive Electric. So if you think about it, right now around the planet, there are around 1 billion cars circulating everywhere. And that is not even counting buses, trucks, motorbikes. And only 1% of that stock is zero emission. Only 1% is electric. So our campaign is about making sure that we electrify everything we can trucks, buses, cars, fleets, and of course we need fewer cars. So in essence, we're trying to go much faster and the next five years are critical. Our campaign basically brings together 70 groups around the planet and this coalition is growing. We're fundraising $1 billion because we need to make sure that all these activists, all these organizations have funding. Some will work with cities, some will work with politicians, some will work with companies. We have to normalize the idea that after a certain date, we cannot sell any more petrol and diesel cars. We are saying no more sales of dirty buses after 2030, 100% of zero emission uh, cars by 2035 for passenger cars and vans. And then when it comes to trucks, we have to give them a little bit of more time because the technology is still expensive and we're saying 2040. There are many misconceptions and, and to some degree that's normal. One that comes often in the conversation is that if you switch to an electric car, that is going to be worse for the environment because of the batteries. And we have lots of research that shows that if you have a life cycle analysis of the battery, it will have an impact for sure. Everything we produce has an impact. And yet the impact, the environmental impact of a fossil fuel car is way bigger. I would say that the one that worries me the most is the perception that electric mobility is an elite agenda for people with a lot of money. And that is probably happening because people link e-mobility with a Tesla, which is, you know, a premium car. And to some degree it's understandable. And yet I would really like us to think about the drivers, the drivers of a public bus, the driver of a truck, the driver of a taxi that has to every day get all that pollution in their lungs, all that noise is always there. And when you talk to them, they will tell you they will never go back to the polluting technology. At the same time, we know that, for example, diesel truck pollution hurts vulnerable communities, you know, low income neighborhoods the most. It hurts everybody but it hurts the poor disproportionately. So working on electrification is also a matter of justice, is also a matter of increasing air quality, improving air quality, and to the extent we link those two agendas, climate and justice, we will realize that electrification is actually very good for, for people.